As a kid, I always enjoyed hockey, and growing up near Pittsburgh, well, I'm sure you know the team I rooted for. And hockey video games were among my favorite sports-themed titles. Sadly, the TurboGrafx refused to hit the ice until the release of TV Sports Hockey in 91. Although it cannot escape the typical TV sports installment issues, this title has some decent depth and can be fun. Let's begin where else but at the extremely lame and static title screen. Yes, I know it looks like HE double hockey sticks here, but let's press run and reveal our first selections. Exhibition is a non-tournament game with a one-player and two-player mode. Obviously, we are not licensed here, so you choose from different countries who will end up being either red or blue, no other colors. You can check differences on the View Teams screen. For example, Norway's team is super fast and a suggestion for beginners. Understanding your opponent's lineups will also help to balance your game. Teammates is up to five players as you assign various members of the team on both sides of the ice, taking advantage of that trusty TurboTap accessory. Then you have Tournament, which allows you to choose a team and take it through a two-conference single elimination tournament for the World Championship, with password continuations. I give the game credit, it has a smorgasbord of mix-and-match multiplayer action. <laughs> hey, I think I just created a slogan for the game. After gameplay style, you can choose easy rules or full rules, which dictates penalties called number of fights, etc. There are a few other goodies options-wise in this game, which are nicely laid out in the manual. And speaking of the manual, look at the front page. <laughs> This was a very early pickup for me on the Turbo Graphics, and playing it again, some nostalgic bells were rung. Anyway, as you start the game, Smiley McGill will appear, and I always loved his missing tooth. He will also pop up a few more times, such as after fights, to congratulate the winners of a game or tournaments, as well as roll the credits. Next, we cut to a really cool close-up of the initial face-off. These close-ups are a staple here, and they still hold up pretty well. You can choose how you want to attack this with forehand, backhand, etc., although I have to be honest, I never am completely accurate. Half the time, I can't win these darn things. Hit it. Hit it! The controls aren't bad with skating, obviously requiring the movement of the directional pad. Although hard for me to describe, there is a slight arcade-like feel here with how the game controls. Once the puck is on its way, your turbo pad number will appear over the player you control. In other words, for one-player games, you'll find the number one. In puck mode on defense, pressing button 2 takes control of the skater nearest the puck until the goalie is on screen for play. In position mode, each turbo pad is assigned a specific position and controls that same player throughout the game. Page 11 of the manual again has some detailed information on changing player controls. Hitting button 2 and a direction will pass. I do have an issue with the passing, which isn't always as sharp as I would like. You often will just have to cross your fingers, it will go where you want. TVSH uses that triangle moving back and forth across the goal line idea we've seen before. When you shoot, the puck will automatically be aimed at the cursor. You can wrist shot, slap shot, fake slap shot, <laughs> your call. If you go in for a breakaway, the screen will zoom in again, although it's a little awkward to control, but still, it's a nice little feature. There is an options screen which allows you to change player control, make substitutions, and check the status of a game. Now, you can only go to this menu by hitting select when the skaters are preparing for a face-off prior to the close-up screen. Normally this wouldn't be a big deal, but there is no timer or scoreboard on the main play area anywhere. So the only way to figure out where you are in the game is to enter this option screen, which is just an odd decision and bizarre. Of course we have the cool fighting segments, which is another close-up staple, and they happen often. The mechanics are slightly involved with dodging and various punches, so just mashing buttons won't work well. Funny enough, only the loser of the fight is penalized, so fight with a passion. 
Sadly, you have no clue who was tossed off the ice and for how long. According to the manual, it's two minutes for penalties, but it is weird that there is no countdown. Then again, if you play on easy mode, well, you can also get away with some other nasty stuff, so the rules can be quirky. The top-down angled look of TV Sports Hockey isn't bad for its time. The game is quite colorful and there are some nice animations in the players. The close-ups are pretty detailed and were a great addition back in the day. Look, it's not the best looking game on the system or anything, but it gets the job done and, and done well. While the title screen music is nostalgic, the overall sound doesn't do the game many favors. I love how it kicks in when you're getting close to the goal, but at times it seems out of place. I will admit the silence actually adds more tension, so maybe the more silence the better. There is some scratching of the ice, which isn't bad, and the puck clunks against objects. Boo! Boo. I guess you're trying to scare your opponent. Boo! Boo. <laughs> the audience on the sides are frozen in awe and excitement with boos and cheers. TV Sports Hockey isn't as bad as some would make it out to be. It is my favorite of the TurboGrafx TV Sports series, that's for sure. We've mentioned some negatives, and sadly, the game just has those weird TV sports flaws and decisions. Like, you can pause the game, and there's no indication, so you'll often be frozen and confused. You can even pause at the title screen demo, which is weird. And overall, the game runs a tad slower than you might like, especially if you choose a slow-moving team. The computer's AI, the, the goalie for sure, is often laughable, and the frame rate is a titch choppy. Another issue is if you start to compare it to games like later entries in the NHL series, something I couldn't get enough of, you really start to see the extra flaws. But I tried to review these games from the perspective of the time of its release, and in 1991, I had more fun with some of the NES installments, but as a whole, this is a good little romp on the ice. Except for this, hit it! Hit it! TV Sports Hockey is a flawed game. However, if you are sticking strictly turbo graphics, it is a fun game to pick up and play with some good gameplay, nice depth, and a decent multiplayer set of options. If you're not a hockey fan, well, this game won't change your mind, so take that for what it's worth. Oh, and, uh, boo! <laughs> gotcha.